3D Back to School Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I am doing a 3D back to school design that has a composition book, a ruler, a pencil, a calculator, and an apple. This design I wouldn't say was wearable simply because all of those little pieces are fairly thin and then they're just sort of attached to the surface of the nail. If you did want it to be uh, more durable then you could put some clear acrylic behind each piece and connect them to the nail more that's going to give them a lot more strength and stability. Otherwise, this is a lot of fun, and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. For my background, I want it to be really dark green, and I don't have a dark green acrylic that I thought was exactly the color I was going for. So the first thing I did is I created an overlay with black, and this is across the entire nail, and that way when I put my dark green on top of it, a little bit of the black will show through and make my green look darker, and it's also gonna add a little bit more dimension to the nail and make it look deeper, if that makes any sense. So now I'm going to be adding my dark green layer, and this isn't going to work if your acrylic is completely opaque, but my green is a little bit, um, it's a little transparent, and so that dark black is going to show through it, and as I said, make it look just a little bit deeper almost. So after I've got my green on there, I'm then going to finish off this base of the nail, the background, with a layer of clear. So I'm going to place that down and then bring it down. And when you're doing this after this clear layer, since this is the finished, the final layer, you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice strong apex and that your nail shape is exactly how you want it because it's not going to get any thicker. And now I'm going to be filing it. The first layer I'm going to file off, I'm going to be using an e-file just to remove some of the bulk. When I use an e-file, I have it very, very low on speed. Um, I don't like to use, I don't, I don't use them very often. And so it's just to basically remove the very top layer and any bigger issues. And then I refine the shape further with a 180 grit file and then buff it with a 240 grit pad of buffer to remove the scratches that the first two vials may have left behind and apply a layer of matte top coat to the nail just to give it sort of that chalkboard appearance. So now on a piece of paper, I'm going to be drawing out the different shapes that I'm going to be creating. So I'm going to have a rectangle for my composition book and then do a little apple shape, a long rectangle for a ruler, a pencil shape, and then a smaller rectangle that is about the same proportions as the composition book, but that is going to be for a calculator. So you don't want it to be quite as big. So over the larger rectangle, I'm going to be sculpting a black and white rectangle. So you can put a nail form backing over the top of your little doodles, and then you can see them through the nail form backing, and that'll give you a really good idea of what to be sculpting on your nail form backing. So when you're doing that, as I said, first I did a black and a white rectangle, then you can let them set and they'll just pop off later on, and then you can put them on the nail. But if you draw out all your shapes in the beginning first, then you know that they're exactly the proportions you want them to be to each other. You know that they're square. If they were, if they looked right on your post, note they're going to be right later on because you're copying yourself basically. And so that's really kind of an easy way to do these things. And so then I'm going to be doing my uh, ruler and I'm going to be making my ruler yellow. Rulers come in a variety of colors, so you can pretty much do whatever color you'd like. Um, but I thought I'd stick with the traditional yellow color. So sculpt yellow over that, and then I'm going to be adding a thin layer over my pencil shape with yellow. And then just pushing that in with my brush from side to side. And the pencil is probably the most delicate part of this design. It is the thinnest, smallest piece. But then on your pencil, I'm going to be adding a little pink bead at the very end, the squared off end, and then a little silver bead next to that for the eraser. And then on the pointed end, I'm going to be covering the tip with white, first and then I'm just going to push that in and while that acrylic is setting I'm going to be filling in the center of my pencil with some more yellow and with doing it in this layered process this is going to give you a much stronger pencil because it's thicker. It is still very thin and very small so it's still delicate it's just got a little bit more thickness to it so it might be a little more durable and then I'm going to add a little bit of black for the lead on the tip and then or I guess it's graphite it's not lead. Then over my apple shape, I'm going to start with red and I'm going to be sculpting out an apple. And right now I'm not worried about it being thick or the right rounded shape for an apple, just that it's got the perimeter that I'm going for. And then with green, I'm going to be adding a leaf. And this is a much lighter, brighter green than what I used on the base of the nail. So just place it down, pull it out into that leaf shape. And then I'm going to be adding another layer of red over my apple to give it that domed round appearance. And then for my calculator, I'm going to start by adding just the layer down for the base shape. So just covering that rectangle with some gray acrylic. 
And this is the same thing. Calculators come in a variety of colors. I just decided to go with the traditional gray or black. So then add another bead of acrylic that's down near one end of your rectangle and then press that out so it has sort of a ski jump look. So it kind of tips up and gets thickest at the very end. And that's going to be for where the screen is. And now I'm going to be gently filing all my shapes that need it. So this is going to be the square shapes pretty much. So I'm going to cover, um, file the cover of my composition book and both pieces, I guess. And then also my calculator. And that one takes a little more filing just to make sure that it's got the right shape on it. So it has that ski jump appearance. And then I'm also going to be filing my ruler. The pencil is so small, I didn't file it just because I didn't want to break it. And the apple is rounded and it looked good. So I didn't worry about filing that one either. So now either using a staple or a little piece of bent wire and two beads, we're going to be making a hinge. So string your beads onto your wire or staple and then set that up against your composition book, the white side. And on the part that was up that's bumpy, um, then I'm going to be attaching that with some clear acrylic and then place a bead of clear acrylic onto your nail and place it down. The reason we use the white side is because the side that was down, the side that was touching your nail form backing is gonna be really smooth. So you want that to be up. And then with your black cover, place the bumpy side up again so the smooth side is towards the white. And then add a couple little beads of clear acrylic touching the beads only of your hinge. That way the black cover is touching the beads and the white cover is touching the wire. That way your hinge will open and your book will open. And then add another bead of clear acrylic to attach your apple and then also attach your calculator and your ruler and your pencil and pre-plan where you want all of these shapes to go on the nail before you start attaching them to make sure that they all fit and that they look like they're in the proper place and now i'm attaching the pencil and if you have more than one thing that's a close color like how my pencil and my ruler are both yellow and how composition book and the calculator are both sort of a gray color or gray tone um, you want to separate those so that they're not touching that's going to give you a balanced appearance and then paint a layer of black paint over the composition book and then blend in some white just to give it that mottled black and white appearance add a black stripe on the edge that's towards the hinge and then paint the little label on the cover with white and you can if you want to you could write out like maybe your initials on the on the little label on the front i just made a couple lines i thought that was appropriate and then I'm going to be painting the inside of it with white even though the bottom is sculpted out with white white paint is going to be a brighter shade of white and my white was a little discolored so if I put the layer of white on there it's going to make it look a lot brighter and more clean and then with blue I'm going to be adding blue stripes that are horizontal throughout the entire page and some both the inside of the cover and on the page itself and then with I'm just going to touch up those lines with white if I need to you may not have to Mine were a little thicker than I had hoped, so I'm going to just thin them out with white. And then with red, add a line that is vertical down near the hinge with a little bit of gap between that and the edge of the page. And then in that edge, we're going to be adding three black dots, one that's right near each bead of the hinge and then one between it. And then on the page, write A plus or whatever grade you want to give yourself. On your apple, I'm going to first highlight it with a brighter shade of red. And then while that red is still wet, I'm just going to add a little bit of a white line as another highlight. Add a black line to add the center vein on your apple and then a little bit of defining lines at the top and the bottom. On your ruler, first go through and make taller lines that go over halfway. And then about halfway up on your ruler, go through and add some more lines between them to add the smaller measurement marks. And then on my calculator, I'm going to create the screen with a moss green. And then with white, I'm going to be painting the buttons and you want 16 buttons. And if you aren't gonna be painting the little numbers on the buttons, you don't have to have 16, you can put whatever numbers is fit. Um, if you are going to have or write out the numbers, 16 is a good number because that gives you all of the buttons that are normally on a calculator. So first paint four down and four across and then fill them in. That way they're gonna be nice and evenly spaced. And then you can make them larger to accommodate the space you have available. I'm going to be painting some letters on my screen. If you wanted to do something funny, you could, you know how when you, I'm, you can do the certain letters to make it when you flip it over, it says boobs or something. You could do that if you wanted, if you wanted to add a little humor into your nail design. If you don't, you can do it like I did and just do 1,234. And then you're gonna to wanna to add your numbers going on your buttons. So zero through nine, a period or a decimal point, an equal sign, plus, minus, multiplication, and division symbols. 
and then you can write ABC on the back. Since there was just a couple spaces that I thought needed to be filled in, I filled them in with just a couple little, as I said, doodles basically with some of that moss green that's going to make it look even more like a chalkboard. So then I'm going to be painting matte top coat over the inside of my composition book, over those little doodles that I did with the moss green on the back, over my calculator, and over the pencil. After that's dried, you can close your composition book and then place some glossy gel sealer over the front of the book, the apple, the ruler, and then put some of that on a palette next to you. And then using a toothpick or something like a dotting tool, you can add a little bit of that glossy gel sealer over the top of the buttons on your calculator and the screen. And doing that is going to give your buttons a little bit of height and make them look like they're three dimensional and a domed shape, which is going to add to the 3D effect. And then over the silver section of your pencil. And that's it. I hope you like this design and please share any recreations with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I would really love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.